Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, and another wonderful conversation is going to happen with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hey, John, great to see you. Nice to be back. Oh, you're checking your teeth there? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You know, you got to get fit right the first time. John, I have a question for you. Um, it seems to me, now you and I have, I've been lucky enough to join you on a number of occasions uh, as you review some of the finest restaurants in the world. And I've noticed that since it's been a while, but since then, it does seem to me that there's a whole lot less French cuisine uh, restaurants uh, w with a French kind of a uh, specialty than Italian. T Italian mm. cuisine has taken over the world, or maybe I'll call it American cuisine. You know, it's that kind of world flavors, just a great restaurant that serves uh, great food from anywhere. Um, what happened to the French cuisine? I haven't seen a, fr quote, French restaurant in years. Well, first of all, thanks for the plug for my book, How Italian Food Conquered the World. Wonderful book, um, <laughs> which uh, well, came out about 15 years ago. And by that time, uh, in fact, had um, to this day, whether you're counting things like Pizza Hut and uh, like that, uh, uh, Italian restaurants do outnumber uh, French restaurants by a war wide margin. And next would probably come Mexican. So French food is never been uh it's been eminent uh and prominent in american gastronomy but it, it's never had anything close to the uh popularity of other ethnic foods um what i was saying first of all it is true in los angeles you have lost some of the best french restaurants that ever existed for various reasons not because they were no longer popular but places like le dome and l'ermitage orangerie i think orangerie may be still open um but they were leaders in their field at that time. They became displaced by many fine Italian restaurants, uh, like at the time, uh, Valentino and, and others. But um, French was kind of all the rage back in the 80s. Um, more to the point, these days, uh, the title of this article that, that I did for Forbes uh, was, Has French Cuisine Lost Its Cachet? Or is this because of the food media? And I contend uh, that it is definitely the latter. The food media in the last 10 years, and specifically the last five years, in trying to be so politically correct, have quite literally stopped cold covering most of all fancy French restaurants, but even the bistros and brasseries. Um, they 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 just ignore them in favor of ethnic restaurants uh, from uh, Indonesia, from Mexico, from Ceylon, from uh, North Africa, et cetera, et cetera. And as I've said on this show before, all of which deserve to be paid attention to and to be reviewed, but not to the exclusion uh, by any means of uh, French uh, restaurants and fine dining. Uh, having said that, in New York, John and Art, if you flew in uh, tonight and you said you wanted to go, are there any good fresh rest restaurants to go to? Well, I could spend the next five minutes just simply listing them from the <clears throat> very top, like Le Benadan and La Granui and uh, Danielle and Jean Georges and, uh, and several others, Christophe Balanca's new, new place. Um, and then uh, the other list is gonna be a number of bistros and brasseries where you go in for traditional food, um, of which we have probably 20 or, or 30, with uh, many opening up and going one uh, to one tomorrow, as a matter of fact, called Maison Close, which is way downtown. So uh, French cuisine <clears throat> has not at all lost its uh, uh, cachet and uh, um, it's because the media has just ignored it. And because a number of those media people are very young, without much of an expense account, <clears throat> and are being encouraged by their editors to cover those restaurants, especially if they're run by women, which is wonderful, LGBTQ people, <clears throat> which is wonderful, excuse me, I cough, and, um, and black people or people of color, <clears throat> all of whom should be 
COVID, but all of which have been in the past. Now the emphasis has just shifted. Well, you know, it's it's uh, hard to run a business without getting any attention. It certainly is. If you don't have <coughs> reviews of your new restaurant uh, in the past, if let's say the L.A. Times, the New York Times gave you two or three stars, I mean, you couldn't get a reservation at these restaurants for months. Now, there are no reviews of such restaurants. Yeah. The New York Times, we are going to be talking about it on another segment, the New York Times restaurant critic just resigned because he just couldn't take eating out seven days a week uh, over 12 years, and it was uh, debilitating to his health. Um, but we could talk about that on another stage. But yeah. no, French cuisine is alive and well. Not everywhere, <clears throat> but uh, in Washington, in Boston, in Chicago, uh, to a certain extent in, in San Francisco, not in Dallas, not in Atlanta, not in Denver, um, not in Baltimore, uh, not in Miami much at all. I can't think of any French restaurants in Miami, but they have their own regional cuisines, which, the, which yeah. they certainly should. Um, but uh, it's it's a it's a rare case of trying to be so PC that you throw out the very you throw out the cologne with the bath water. Yeah, but you know it, is, it seems as if uh, you're you're bringing up something which is tangential to this conversation, which is that given the state of affairs, the financial affairs of uh, many of the leading newspapers, and magazines, many of whom even are going out of business, their budgets are being cut, so they're saying. We're just not going to uh, be able to afford to do the kind of reviews that um, we were famous for in the past because of money. And right. so, therefore, everything may be thriving, but we can't talk about it because we got to pay. We got to pay for it when we go in to buy a meal. Yeah, well, you do. And uh, for instance, the Gannett chain, which owns USA Today, mm -hmm. has gotten rid of uh, and a lot of their papers have failed, but they've gotten rid of um, restaurant reviewers in favor of food reporters. So instead of going to a restaurant and reviewing it and paying your bill and leaving and writing about it, you have them going to the restaurant and interviewing the owner or the chef and tasting a few things on camera or saying, here I am sitting here um, with um, the owner of this place and this special place, which is perfectly legitimate. Um, but it's not a review in the sense of what we used to know because they don't want to put out that money for your expenses. When the average meal for two people these days is going to cost $150, $200, sure. um, and your paper is failing and you're not getting the ads you once did for the Wednesday food section, uh, it's tough to do. Well, That's I have a suggestion for our time. audience. Go to johnmariani.com which is the home of the newsletter of the virtual gourmet and John still eats and he still tells you the truth. And from time to time, you'll be able to find out anything in the New York area. And then he takes out an occasional trip. He goes uh, around the country or around the world and uh, you'll find out what restaurants are still alive. You will. And when I come to New York, John, you're going to take me to a French restaurant. I shall. Be happy to. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.